What's up, guys? Thank you for tuning in. We are celebrating seven years of the zine today. Uh, for those of you that remember, we were under the name The Metal Web Zine uh, for the first six years. Um, and we changed to Wretched Sound in officially in August of 2021. Uh, so with a new month uh, being next month, uh, comes a new issue of the physical zine. So here we have the April 2022 issue. Uh, this is a special issue because it also marks the one year anniversary of when we started doing the monthly printed zines. Uh, so the first one was April 2021, and that had Sean Gomez on the cover uh, from Hell Ever After, Seplophile, Grizzly Run, and Prepare for the Mind Scan. Uh, and this one features um, a couple friends of ours, actually. So Shallow Teeth, they're like the local uh, nostalgic throwback to like Dillinger Escape Plan and Converge and bands like that back when they were in their prime. And uh, down below we have Wasted Space and uh, two of those guys used to be in Squatch. So like uh, a dissident really aggressive like instrumental band like progressive or experimental band if you will but um now with their their vocalist um with his wide ar array of harsh and clean vocals i'd say wasted space has more in common with blindside actually like there were a lot of like squatch songs that reminded me of like blotted science but the new Wasted Space material, like, reminds me a lot of uh, that Swedish band, that Swedish screamo band that was big, like, 20 years ago, Blindside. Like, their latest record, uh, which we review in this uh, magazine here, and it's also available, the review is also available on wretched Um That new EP of theirs is called Never Odd or Even, and uh, there were a lot of, like, clean vocal and clean guitar parts across that EP that really had that um that old school blindside vibe to them. So I thought that was really cool and again another uh, nostalgic piece. And so here is my friend Jason Halkema. We played in the melodic thrash band Aspired Infliction here in Buffalo for about 10 years together and Jay is now a streamer. So I kind of ventured out my usual and um I wanted to interview someone who uh was doing something a little different um he mostly does, like, uh, Call of Duty, like Warzone and stuff, uh, Modern Warfare, uh, stuff like that on his uh, stream. And you can catch him at twitch.tv slash jhelks. Uh, and there's the spelling on that. Um, yeah, Jay, um, he's been streaming for about two years now. He's doing pretty well on Twitch and YouTube. And uh, he also still plays guitar, still writes some metal music, and puts that on his stream. So... Uh, if you like, uh, yeah, if you like Call of Duty and Metal, check out Jay's stream, because you'll, you'll get plenty of both. So yeah, I'm really, really proud of this issue. Um, it's cool that we've been doing, uh, monthly printed zines for a year, and, uh, sales have been consistently going up, uh, every month. So obviously you guys want us to continue doing this. Um, it's really blossomed into something I didn't expect it to, and, like, I'm super, super grateful about that. Um, so just going through here, um, yeah, here we go. Pol Polybius. Awesome, uh, awesome band from Rochester. I'm in a band now, by the way. I'm, uh, I'm in a live band again. I, uh, do vocals in Of Desolation, where I'm a melodic death band from Buffalo. And we played Montage Music Hall... Uh, in January, uh, towards the end of January of this year, and it was my first, that was my first show back in two years, so that was really awesome to do. Uh, Polybius played that show, uh, they had kind of a classic heavy metal vibe, like, mixed with some more aggressive, like, death metal-esque uh, styles, and, uh, they had an awesome guitar player, uh, and I, uh, I loved everything they had going on. If anybody remembers, uh, Nuclear Winter, uh, the Buffalo Thrash Band, uh, I think three guys who were in Nuclear Winter are, are doing this Polybius thing now. So it's really awesome to see um, 
to see a, a band like that come from the ashes of Nuclear Winter and uh, kind of fuse together like your classic heavy metal, your more aggressive styles of extreme metal, and throwing a guitar in the mix. And like the the guitar player, she she's wonderful. She uh, she had some solos. Um, everyone in the band has great stage presence. Like they're just a, a very eclectic, very energetic band to watch. Super cool. So um, so I kicked off this issue with them. Uh, and then, I don't know if anybody remembers uh, a screamo band. A lot of, like, nostalgia in this issue. Like, a lot of, uh, like, stuff that will immediately invoke memories of, like, your favorite bands 20 years ago. At least that's how it was for me. So if anybody remembers a screamo band, uh, screamo-ish band from, maybe they were kind of, like, post-rock or post, uh, post-metalcore or something like that. But going back, um... Going back to like 2006, uh, this band was called the Rival Sonata. Uh, they were formed from Led Astray. So the Rival Sonata kind of morphed, or it was like Led Astray morphed into the Rival Sonata, if anybody remembers uh, either of those two bands with like Chris Lems on vocals. Mark Lee uh, played guitar for the Rival Sonata, and uh, I hadn't really heard from him like since those days. But now he's doing a pop punk band called Gumshoe. So they have a cool new single out, and it's called uh, I Never Know When to Quit, I think is the name of the song. And um, yeah, like super old school, like Newfound Glory almost meets Yellow Card vibes. Uh, yeah, just didn't, uh, didn't expect. I knew he'd be back, Mark, but I didn't expect it to be with a band like this. And it's, it's really cool that, uh, that Buffalo has a new pop punk band. Like that's not something I really like even delve into, but, um, and I don't know what the pop punk scene is like in this area. So maybe I shouldn't talk about it like I do, but uh, I, I know that having a brand new band in the scene, no matter what style they play, cannot be a bad thing as long as that band is good at what they do. And Gumshoe, I'm not really a pop punk guy. I mean, I guess I liked like Newfound Glory and Blink and uh, what was that offshoot of Blink-182? I think it was called Boxcar Racer. I liked that shit like 20 years ago. 20, 25 years ago by now, maybe. So, yeah. um, Yeah, Gumshoe is good if you still enjoy that sound. Like, it's, uh, I guess it's got a new, a newer sounding, like a modern edge to it, you know, even though it's super, super, like, late 90s, early 2000s pop punk in nature, I guess. So that's cool stuff. They're playing The Attic. So they're playing upstairs at Good Bar on Elmwood on uh, April 15th with uh, Badger Danger, Karma Queen, and yeah, I don't know either of those bands. So again, I, I think I'll move on from this just because I don't know that, that part of the Buffalo music scene at all, but uh, it's just great to see Mark out doing things again, and I wanted to like represent him in the magazine and kind of give them a little extra press. Uh, a band I'm really excited about. They recently got back together. They're from the Southern Tier. Uh, my old band, Aspired Infliction, we played many shows with these guys, like out in like Oxford and out in like Central New York. We did uh, Finger Lakes Metal Fest with them as well. Um, bound and Quartered. So I, I refer to them as the Southern Tier, like kings and queens of slam. And they're just a really cool, like, brutal slam death metal band with like awesome like inward growls and like just sludgy like punishing riffs and like all sorts of like crazy blast beat transitions i don't know for the most part they're like a slam band so like it's pretty like down tempo like super brutal but they do uh they do have some pretty cool changes some really cool like uh like transitions and like blast beat passages and like I guess there's a little like death and grind mixed in with that slam. So if you're into that stuff, it's really cool. They're they're like um like the first band they remind me of is Devourment, but I would also compare them to like like uh almost like what Job for a Cowboy used to sound like. Like uh before Genesis. 
whatever that EP was that came out before Genesis, when, when Job for a Cowboy was, like, more of a deathcore band. So, like, that's the modern vibe that Bound and Quartered has, mixed with, like, like Slam or, like, Brutal Death Metal, like, like Devourment or Pyrexia, I think. So, yeah, it's really cool shit. Um, I think it's just called Doom. That first Job for a Cowboy EP that was, like, more deathcore. But I could be wrong. John Lambert. John Lambert at Noise Dosage Media. He's doing cool stuff. Um, he's doing... He's doing a documentary. With some pretty noteworthy bands. Not just local bands. I mean, he recently met up with Travis Ryan from Cattle Decapitation. And they had a thing. But every week he's posting. So if you go to, like, the Noise Dosage Media, like, Facebook or Instagram accounts... You can see all these different, like, uh, interviews and stuff he's doing, and uh, different, j just like, uh, they're not even really interviews. Like, he's just filming conversations with some really, really, like, important people in, like, extreme metal. Like, it's really cool the way it's evolving. And uh, he's also booking shows now, and he opened up a new space for us here in Buffalo. It's a new art space uh, on Main Street somewhere in downtown Buffalo called Area 54, and uh, they just did... Uh, Doused in Death or Doused with Death, some two-day festival on March 18th and 19th. And I guess that went really well. And they didn't just have bands play. Like, they had, like, live painting and, like, other arts and crafts and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. Um, And I know they're doing something there again this summer. Uh, another two-day thing, I think. But it hasn't been announced yet, so I won't say much more about it. But for now, um, yeah, John's... Uh, he started up Noise Dosage Media, like, right around the start of the pandemic, and it's, like, primarily a podcast, but, like, the documentary stuff's really cool, too. He's turned into a really good filmmaker. So here's, uh, here's John with Travis from the Cattle Decapitation. And, yeah. So we kind of already talked about Shallow Teeth. I have them in here next. Um, talking about some, like, uh, venues here in Buffalo that don't exist anymore, like Extreme Wheels. Jay Hilks, we talked about. Um, oh, and here we have, here we have Cody. And he, um, this is another example. It's kind of why I paired him with Jay in this issue. I had him, his article immediately follow Jay's. Like, Cody is, um, again, I wanted a new perspective on things. And in Cody's case, I, I wanted to go on the other side of the merch table. So, like, Cody's toured with bands like, uh, uh, well, let's see. I know he's been doing this for a while. I mean, when I, the last time I saw him, he was doing merch for, like, Sarah Longfield at, uh, at Horizon. In, uh, Lost Horizon? Is there a venue in Syracuse called Lost Horizon? Or am I thinking of the band Lost Horizon? Anyway, um, yeah, that was the last time I saw Cody... And that was, like, maybe three, four years ago. But that was, like, Sarah Longfield and Nail Bliviscaris. But he's been on all sorts of tour. Like, yeah, here we go. The Last Ten Seconds of Life. Uh, oh, okay. So, yeah, he, he, I asked him how he got started doing this. So, like, I'll just read this whole... This will give you some good perspective on, on why I interviewed Cody. Because, like, he's just... You get a lot of experience on the road with, like, bigger bands when you go out that long and you just play... You, you go to all different venues and, you know, you, you, you run merch and run the business side of it for all these different bands and all these different clubs and you meet their fans and you, you just gain that perspective. So, so when I asked him how he started going out on tours, he said, so long story short, it all started when a friend of mine, Sarah Longfield, who I became a candidate with not long prior, posted about needing a fill-in for a merchandiser on a tour. I decided to email her and give it a shot. I mean, why not, right? I ended up getting a message from her shortly after and was told that I got the position. I ran a near 32-day run alongside Winter Sun and Nea Bliviscaris across North America, and I knew from that moment on I wanted to continue doing this as my profession. I ended up bothering the guys in the last 10 seconds of life countless times to let me do merch for them, and in due time I became an unofficial full-time member of that goon squad. So that's just part of what he said, but that... So yeah, I thought that was cool. I thought it was cool to talk to somebody who does that as opposed to just getting someone in a band or interviewing a full band uh, to get things from like the the recording studio or the uh, stage perspective. Um, and I also like to, speaking of the studio, like I also like to interview sound engineers as well. I've done that in the past. Um, D-Brain. 
death metal from Buffalo, New York. A lot of people, when they think of Buffalo, they think of Cannibal Corpse. So it's a good thing that we have a decent crop of death metal representation here again. So Seplophile is a good one. Uh, Mass Casualty is a good one. Um, Anthropic is like a grind band, but they're pretty death metal as well, I feel. Uh, and D-Brain, D-Brain, they're great. Um, yeah, my, my man P.W. is in this band. He's probably the one I know best, Dan McGill. And uh, these guys um, have really evolved their sound. Because I remember they sounded, when they first started playing shows three, four years ago, they sounded a little disorganized to me. But um, they're really playing in the pocket now. And it's just faster and more aggressive. And it's uh, it's it's weird because they're they're more technical, but they're also simpler like it's straightforward it's tighter it's in the pocket um very enjoyable band to listen to and super catchy too like there are a lot of death metal bands i can't get into because their their material just isn't catchy enough it's like too it's too diminished or it's too dissonant like to the point where like none of the riffs are like earworms to me but like uh debrained has some serious sticky parts like great hooks really cool band um, oh yeah, their next show, April 21st with Anthropic. I just brought them up. So we got Local Grind, Death, and Slam, and it's Anthropic with D-Brained, and I'm going to be completely honest, I have no idea who the fuck this third band is, and I cannot read their name. But here's the flyer, it's going around, if you're following any of these bands on social media. Oh, and this is a Coming of Rage Productions show. So Jeff Standish has been doing Coming of Rage Productions in town for 10 years, and bringing death metal bands and black metal bands to Western New York that you would have never seen otherwise. And uh, his birthday was March 18th. So my band of Desolation played stamps on March 18th and Jeff showed up and, you know, got to embarrass him a little bit, say happy birthday. And it was, uh, it was a fun time. So yeah, much love to Jeff Standish as well. Um, doing an inter another interview with him soon because I want to pick his brain about... Um, like what his plans are now that Coming of Rage has lasted 10 years and he's he's really uh, beefed up his contact list, so to speak. So yeah, Wasted Space, we talked about them. So yeah, if, any, if you guys used to listen to Blindside, like 20 years ago, like when that album Silence came out, like if you like stuff like that, but you also like aggressive, dissonant, like uh, down-tuned music with like a lot of erratic changes and a lot of and a lot of like really like eerie dissonance to it like, like almost like like blotted science so like blindside meets blotted science if that at all sounds appealing to you you will love the new um wasted space album never odd or even yeah and we reviewed that but you can also go to wretched hyphen sound.com and read any of our album reviews without having to buy this um design the void from kane pennsylvania if anybody knows the band narwhal bloodbath um if you're a fan of jesse isidore um he's probably my favorite harsh vocalist in this whole region um he's just so powerful like his voice is so strong and he's so diverse i i call his different voices his different tones his characters um, he has all these different characters that he plays in his music, um, all of his different pitches of his gutturals, his mids, his higher shrilly stuff, um, and he's so creative, like his vocal stylings, his patterns, which character, which voice to use where, his cadence, you know, phrasing, um, lyrically he's really, really cool too, he's very to the point, you know, he doesn't get super worried. He doesn't try to sound smart. He just is smart. And he's very concise and very straightforward with his lyrics, and that really comes out. Um, and Joshua Johnson is his guitar player and also their primary sound engineer. They record everything in-house. The next album of theirs is going to be called... Here it is. Next Sequence, and that comes out March 2nd, 2022. So when I describe Design the Void, I say that they're like like the Stranger Things soundtrack, like 80s synthwave meets modern metal or modern metal core. 
Uh, so imagine, like, if the composers of the Stranger Things soundtrack started a melodic-esque gent band, like, with some really impressive over-the-top guitar solos, too. Um, that's a pretty, to me, that's an accurate description of Design the Void. And now, uh, getting into some post-metal. So if you like bands like Isis or Pelican or Jezu, uh, more atmospheric post-metal bands like that, like pretty down-tempo, almost like, like stoner metal, pretty down-tempo, pretty, like, it's almost kind of like drone-ish, but you get lost in those melodies, that kind of post-metal. Elusive Travel from Rochester is a very good one. And that's Chris Dalson and uh, Michael Adams, who used to play drums in Order of the Dead. So it's these two guys hammering out this post-metal, but Chris has been doing elusive travel for uh, about 20 years now, and I had no idea. Like, that's, for any local band, like, that's impressive longevity. Um, so yeah, if you're into stuff like that, like, uh, their new album, I don't remember. Oh yeah, My Final Demise. They just recorded something together with the new lineup. It's on Bandcamp right now. It's called My Final Demise. Uh, give you a perfect example of what I'm talking about and the direction they're headed. So it's really cool stuff. Uh, this is pretty... This one is exceptionally long, too. I actually did a hardcover version of this that you can find online as well. I'll leave purchase links to everything down in the description. Uh, but um, this one got up to almost 80 pages. And it was because, you know... People are out playing shows again. They're playing live. Um, it's cool. Um, now that shows are happening again, real shows, not just streams, people have more to talk about. And I also took the time to interview each member of each band, or like from that was the case for most of the bands. Usually I just pick one member from each to keep it moving. But I wanted to, this is a special time, you know, things are getting back to normal. Knock on wood. So I wanted to talk to uh, vocalists, guitarists, bassists, drummers, uh, guitar players, you know, um, get everybody's take on uh, what could potentially be a post-COVID world. Um, yep. And then if anybody remembers Riley, who was doing that noise band and medic, well, before that, she was also doing... Um, Sound waves attacking nothing. And Riley came on board right around the start of COVID. And uh, she's still kind of here and occasionally contributes to what we're doing here at Wretched Sound. But she started with the metal web scene back in the spring of 2020. And she goes by the name Lily Livid now. And uh, her new project with members of Grab and Image uh, is called Girls Against Hetero Tyranny. And I love that we have some, some trans women doing some aggressive, uh, I, th I think it's, it's pretty dissonant. I mean, the, the title of this magazine is Lessons in Dissonance. And it, they are a very dissonant band. But um, it's, it has a very honest, like, hardcore-esque anger to it. Very angry project. And they don't really care about production value. So if you find Girls Against Hetero Tyranny on YouTube, where you can listen to their demo, you're going to hear raw, unedited, harsh, gritty, I guess, modern metal meets old school hardcore would be kind of a fair description. They're a pretty eclectic band. I mean, it is it is diverse stuff, but it it focuses on speed and aggression and just filthy guitar tones, just dirt, all the dirt, all the feedback, all the string noise. It all gets left in there because it's it's not about production value. It's not about being crisp and like studio perfect. It's about just anger. It's about just getting that aggressive message and that honest raw emotion across so uh if you like stuff like that with all the warts left intact purposely in the production then you'll absolutely love what the hell they're doing so i think we've come to the end here unless i have something else that's like special to talk about 
Oh, there's a new... They recently played Mohawk Place in Buffalo. Uh, Extinction AD has a new one uh, called Culture of Violence. And Billy Page, who's still with us, Billy Page from Wrong the Oppressor, reviewed that one up, and that's right here. And I think that's it. Oh, yeah, I have to give a shout-out to our favorite record store ever up in Niagara Falls, Music Matters. Um... Yeah, I really don't think you'll find a better, like, especially if you're a fan of, like, metal, like, lesser-known metal. Like, you won't find a better, and, like, a lot of local stuff, too. You won't find a better selection of, like, vinyl, CD, or even cassette than, than Music Matters when it comes into, like, every last band you could possibly find there. And there are a lot of great record stores around here. Like, uh, like Black Dots is one. Revolver is cool. Um, there are a lot of cool record stores in this area. But, like, Music Matters is just really, really special. It's like, it's like a metal, like, physical media connoisseur's wet dream in there. So, yeah. I really think, oh, yeah. How could I forget? And, I, like, people have been blasting this for, like, months online. And I've been posting about it, too. So it's kind of redundant at this point. But it's really not, because it needs to be discussed. So here is the final lineup for A Day of Death, which is the tribute to Brian Pattison. Brian Pattison died of uh, pneumonia exacerbated by COVID in November of 2020. And uh, the tribute show to him will be at the Brooklyn Monarch on April 23rd, 2022. And you'll find the flyer for that kind of posted all over the fucking universe by now. But that's put on by Armageddon Productions and Glorious Times Productions. So if you remember the the metal zine that um, Brian Pattison used to put out with Alan Moses, uh, Glorious Times. And that was kind of a look back at like the, the beginnings of death metal in general. Um, there's a new publication. There's a, there's a re-release of that out. So there are a couple versions of that magazine, that book out now, Glorious Times. So those two uh, production companies, I guess are putting on the next Day of Death, which is an event that, that Brian uh, is responsible for. And uh, I guess he coined that as an event title in this area as well. So the final lineup being Incantation, Massacre, Embalmer, Malignancy, uh, Nun Slaughter, Deceased, Anthropic, of course, Sewage Grinder, and uh, yeah, I'll be honest, I, I don't recognize this logo. I don't recognize this logo, and I can't fucking read it, so sorry. Um, yeah, it's not fucking listed here. Oh, and there will be door prizes to be announced after the first band plays, then another one at second band, autograph, cannibal corpse, vinyls, and more, plus silent auction for amazing items. So yeah, lots of cool stuff to win. If you're doing the pilgrimage from Buffalo out to Brooklyn, definitely, uh, you know, come early and stay late, I would say. So that is Wretched Sound issue nine. April 2022, Lessons in Dissonance. Uh, purchase links in the description below. Uh, subscribe to the channel. I haven't been posting that often lately, but I'm going to get back into it. Um, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I put out a new video. Um, yeah, thanks for supporting the zine and really, really showing me that, you know, the quest to bring back physical zines is not in vain. It's really cool that um that you guys are into this and that you know the the numbers are going up 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 on my uh, on my sales report every month. So I've been doing this for a year now and it looks like we're just going to keep right on going and you guys like it. So um and you know no one's ever, you know, I I don't expect people to to pay for this shit. I mean, I have to charge what I have to charge especially for hardcovers cuz those are expensive to put out. But I don't expect anybody to to go on Amazon or go to a local record store and, like, buy my shit in order to read it. Like, if you want to check out what's going on in Wretched Sound, if you don't want the physical copy, if you don't want to buy the physical copy, you wait a month. A month later, the next physical copy will come out. And when that happens, all the articles that were in the previous will be on the website for free. So my WordPress is wretched-sound.com. And, uh, yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, I'll check in with you guys when I have more content to post. Peace.